Getting to 500 yet again in a 10-point loss to the Houston Rockets on the road. We're going to talk about it, break it all down, have some fun right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes. Uh, make sure you guys are following the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content. And uh, yeah, the Bulls got their ass kicked by the Houston Rockets, a team that is now has now won their seventh game in a row. And the Bulls, yet again, just fall short of getting to 500. It's just why it eludes the Chicago Bulls so much, I do not know what's the difficulty about this team getting to 500. They talked about it on the broadcast today. The Bulls, since their, their start, have actually been playing some of the best basketball. They actually would have forty over 40 wins at this point if they played with the same pace post that uh, break that they started off with. But it, it, it still leaves the Bulls, Bulls in a tough spot, man. Uh, you know, getting to 500, like I've said many times before, it really only means so much anyway. Can you stay above 500 is the biggest question here for the Bulls. And it's not just about that, right? It's about the execution in this game. Once again, the Bulls kind of just fall short against a team that throughout, like, they they just play with better execution down the stretch. The, if you looked at these two teams that play today, which one of the teams do you think were, the, were would have been the uh, more veteran team, right? The team that had former All-Stars and things on it. It's the Houston Rockets, right? They they just played a much better brand of basketball, and that kind of goes, in my opinion, to coaching. The coaching fell with the Chicago Bulls. Now, that's not all on coaching. Let me be clear. I'm not saying that, oh, well, we would have won this game, and the coach is the only thing that held us back. No, the players' execution held us back absolutely as well, but the lack of adjustments. Ime Doka had his team ready. You can tell a game plan that this team had – against the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls just didn't really have the ability and weren't ready to counteract that. And that's what sits the Bulls in this type of position when they continue to play like this and play down. I won't even say down to their competition, but they just don't execute. Yes, we lose DeMar DeRozan in this game. He gets ejected after an altercation with Dylan Brooks, even though I don't feel like he should have. Dylan Brooks touched him first, and he turned around. I don't think uh, DeMar was trying to elbow Dylan Brooks in the face when he did that. Did that. Now, again, uh, refs, I don't think, take intent in perp uh, into consideration. They just look at the fact that you did hit another player in the face. DeMar does score 16 points in on his 24 minutes in this game, but I would assume another career high from him, 35 points in this game, 13 of 18, two assists, three steals, two rebounds in this game with those 35 points. Nikola Vucevic with 10, uh, re I'm sorry, 16 rebounds, 16 points, 14 rebounds, and six assists from Nikola Vucevic, 12 points from Alice Caruso. He goes three of 11 from the field. In, in Kobe White's first game back, he does play 29 minutes. He goes five of 13 from the field for 13 points, four rebounds, three assists. Andre Drummond with nine points, eight rebounds off the bench. Dalen Terry with six points. But overall, the Bulls just didn't have enough. We didn't play the way that we needed to play or execute to really be in this game. We got out-rebounded by 49 points. They had 13 offensive rebounds on top of that. The Bulls just, uh, it was just one of those games where despite them getting the lead down to single digits a few times, they got down from that 19-point deficit. They got down again after going down by a bunch of points. It just, they didn't make the necessary momentum plays in this game to really truly get back in this game. Second chance points. Houston Rockets won that 16 to 11. Fast break points. Rockets won that 23 to 14. Bench points. They won that 49 to 28. Uh, points in the paint. We did win that 54 to 46. Rebound. We already said it. We got out rebound there. Points off turnovers. We uh we got we won that battle 22 to 15. But it just uh it wasn't enough. This is this was one of those games, man, where just you can tell the Bulls just didn't have it, man. And it's really unfortunate because you would love to see the Bulls have been able to get back to 500 on, on the night. And it just wasn't there, man. Just was not there. So, eh, the Bulls fall short yet again. We should all be used to it by now. And we'll see what the Chicago Bulls can do, I guess, in the next game, right? We'll see what they can do Saturday against Boston. 
That'll get them, uh, you know, probably another game closer to 500 if they can pull that game out. Uh, I won't guarantee that they will, but we'll see. The double big lineup in this game. Now, I talked about how it wasn't really effective in the first half. The overall results in this game with Vooch and Drum on the court were positive. 14 minutes and 47 seconds played, so almost 15 minutes played. We had a plus minus of plus one. We had a net rating of, of positive 7.8 and a defensive rating of 126, which isn't great. But at least things were trending in the right direction there. Maybe uh, Billy Donovan could look to use that um, again, maybe down the road, something like that. But not enough adjustments, not enough reduction uh, off the bench, not enough uh, responding or, or well-played defense down the stretch of this game. Just a lot of things played into what helped fought the Bulls and not be able to get the win tonight. And that just is what it is, man. It really sucks. Only eight minutes from uh, Batim tonight, which that's a little bit weird. He was negative 15 on, 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 the, on the night. Dalen Terry with, 20, with 17 minutes. Uh, you got Andre Drummond with 24, Kobe White with 29. No Javon Carter. Uh, no Terry Taylor in this game at all. Julian Phillips is still out with his injury, so we weren't going to see him. But, uh, yeah, man, just ugly. Ugly game, and unfortunately, the Bulls are – once again, on the wrong side of 500. Let's go ahead and see how you guys are feeling about this. Anthony Vargas says, let's talk about this freaking team losing to the Rockets. Listen, the Rockets are playing a lot of good basketball right now. So it's not like we can say, like, hey, they lost to a terrible team. Terry didn't score a lot of points tonight, but he definitely made a big impact on the game starting in the fourth quarter and when he was uh, in the game overall. Yeah, Terry played pretty well today. P played pretty well. I'm willing to get a tattoo of Kobe's face somewhere on my body if the Bulls get to 500. That's how confident I am. This team's never getting to 500, not even above. That's crazy. Uh, every center outplays Vooch, even a third-string center like Landell. He outplayed Vooch and Drummond. Let's not just single out Nikola Vucevic in this game. He outplayed a lot of Bulls tonight. Honestly, Bill, Billy Donovan gets on my nerves because that two-big lineup was not needed. Well, I can understand why he went to it in this game. We were getting out-rebounded. They were getting a lot of second-chance points, like a lot of second-chance points. So I can kind of understand why he went to it to try to keep the, the Rockets off the board some. And it is what it is. Bulls allergic to 500 again. That's what I should have titled this episode. It's actually a really great title. You most definitely need to draft the center in the upcoming draft because Andre Drummond and Nikola Vucevic were a big reason why we lost tonight. They were. They were. Out coach and out class every single time, JK. Honestly, I expected the Bulls to lose this game, but the way we lost was frustrating as fuck. Yeah, listen, the way that you lost is definitely it definitely matters. It definitely matters. The Bulls lost this game very ugly, very ugly. And it's it's unfortunate. Yet again, we're talking about this team losing another game in this manner. Um, but hey. But yeah. Bulls spent more time trying to be bullies than actually trying to win the game. As soon as that scuffle started, I knew it was over. This team needs a rehaul, but it won't happen. Save us, Ryan Poles. That's funny. Uh, it's a game where Vooch should have dominated instead of getting outplayed by Landell. Embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's... Uh, Vooch didn't play terrible offensively. Defensively, energy-wise... It left a lot to be desired, man. A lot to be desired. DeMar DeRozan gets uh, in injected? Injected? I don't think that's the word you want there, Anthony. Whenever DeMar's playing bad, he loses his cool and control. This team was uh, will sputter towards the end of the season. AK has to do right by the players and fix the team in the offseason. See, this is how I know you don't actually watch games and see. Because he, he wasn't playing bad at all. DeMar wasn't playing bad. The team was playing bad. And he didn't lose his cool because he was playing bad. Like, the, the dumbass put, I'm, I know you watch games. I'm actually talking shit about not watching games. But um, I don't think DeMar was playing bad. I, like, he wasn't shooting the ball effectively, but he wasn't playing hugely bad. And I do think that Dylan Brooks got in his head, but it wasn't just DeMar just lost his cool. Dylan Brooks put his hands on him first. So... Can someone tell me what the hell does Billy uh, do well? Not an X's and old guys, not a great motivator, not an uh, offensive defense specialist. Somebody help me out. True gum. Choose, choose that bubble gum. He's elite. He's he's the greatest bubble gum chewer in the history of bubble gum chewers. 
Y'all can say whatever y'all want about Terry, but when he played, look, nobody said, Shay, why do you always talk about stuff like you're up against somebody? Nobody disagreed with you. And don't get me wrong, I blame vets on this team too, like DeRozan and especially Vooch. But as a coach, I'd be wanting to know in the locker room, what do you tell uh, or do for these guys to prepare? I agree with you there. Coach has to, ha ha has to have sat someone when they didn't feed Vooch with, with Van Vliet on him in the post. This is 95% coaching, suspects lineups, out-rebounded. This is just pathetic. There you go. Brazil popular in the building. This is ridiculous. Houston played Vooch's, uh, poked Vooch's eye 11 seconds, and they kept beating us up the whole game unchecked. The refs should be ejected for real, for real. This game made me mad. We did a lot of stupid sloppy play, but I think regardless, if we didn't lose tomorrow, we would have won. And Io cooking still, they should have gotten him more shots. I'm uh, impressed with DT. Well, listen, I get it, and and you know you feel like it, it, he had 18 shots, man. Like I get what you're saying in that, but come on, the dude scored 35 points. Somebody else got to step up. Now we will beat Boston Sunday, let's uh, Saturday, let's hope so, to make that, that one of the biggest wins of the season and give hope for a potential first playoff matchup to keep those tickets selling until the season end. That's that's hey, listen, you just preach there, MC. You definitely just preach there, bro. Demar tweaking hard, never seen him like that. Never you never seen Demar like that's not the first time Demar has been like that. But it wasn't, it wasn't Demar, right? It wasn't. Like I said, I don't think Demar. I don't think Demar meant to hit him with the elbow in the face. I think he turned around like, "What are you doing?" Because if you look, Dylan Brooks, like if you get elbowed across the nose and somebody means to elbow you, you're gonna feel that. Dylan Brooks, I don't even think he really hit. Like his elbow basically just breezed past his face. I don't think it was like a hard thing. If, if Demar was aiming to, you can do some damage with an elbow to a nose. I told you, Dylan Brooks is the biggest asshole. Acme needs to get rid of Carter and replace. It's not that Diesel. You you talk about things like they're video games, bro. Nobody's gonna take Javon Carter with how he played this season. Actually, uh, actually, the jump ball was hilarious. He got poked in the eye and didn't even move. And Billy had to use a timeout. I don't get how Billy used one at the start and had two at the end. Seaways World in the building says ref should win six man of the year. Monk got competition. Very frustrated by this game. It was bad. It was bad. I'm all for the Mavs route and letting the rookie start uh, for center next season and letting DeMar walk. And listen, if it don't work out, then our pick is top 10 protected. You're not wrong, Vaughn. You're not wrong at all in that, bro. Not wrong. Hey, I'm here to apologize to Kobe White and Io because at the beginning of the season, I didn't think that they were going to be little to nothing. I thought that they were just going to be mediocre. A lot of people thought that. A lot of people thought that. Yeah, Villain Brooks uh, strikes again for sure, but to the benefit of the Rockets. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I already read that one. Use your timeout to make adjustments. Billy, even if it's for a two-minute span, why not try something if you have all these timeouts? Well, again, I, I don't think a timeout would have helped much in this case anyway. I just don't. But, I mean, I get what you're getting at. We need DeMar. Mm, we were losing with DeMar in there. But the Bulls do need a goon on the squad. One of the Marcus Twins or Montrez Harrell, they need, no, they need skill. Having a goon on the squad ain't going to do shit for wins, not for where this team is. That's why I'm always on Billy, bro. Uh, it's not all on him, but as a coach, you have to take responsibility. If your team is not mentally prepared for uh, to go for the kill when they reach 500, it's coaching. Nah, that's still on the players. Like, I get we think we, – we, let's not mystify coaching either, right? Coaching has an impact, but your players have to want it. And we have a – like I've always said, right, we have a lot of good guys on this team. Don't have a whole lot of killer instinct when it matters the most. Hayes, I don't care who disagrees. Oh, my God, Shay. Like, you're, you're, you're exhausting, bro. Nobody's disagreeing with you. Everybody is basically agreeing with you, bro. I really thought we were going to get to 500 this game. Just made my head hurt. Good night. About to go to sleep. Hey, get that rush, bro. Get that rush. It's not better to call a timeout. We always make a turnover. That's another thing. That's another good thing, point, Dan, because 
Yeah, you could call a timeout, but if you can't, and one thing Billy doesn't do well is draw inbound plays. His inbound players are absolutely atrocious. Atrocious. Rockets playing with house money, don't own their own first round pick, top four protected, have Brooklyn first round. <sighs> And up to four second round picks. They have no reason to lose. They're fighting hard to play. And listen, I said that in the um in the pre-recorded video today. They are playing with house money. They're on a seven-game winning streak now. So yeah. Yeah, uh, just try to affect the momentum and change in the game. I didn't actually watch the whole game, so my bad if some of the comments are off. I'm gonna rewatch it later. Hey, listen, I feel you on that. I feel you on that one. I own Kobe are the starting guards of the future. I think it's better to move DeMar and Levine in the offseason. Yeah, I, I get it to you. People, a lot of people aren't going to agree with that, but we'll see what this, this team does. If I, I I definitely think there's a high probability at least one of them are gone. But I, I mean, it's just sending them off doesn't really improve the team. You got it. What are you replacing them with? Right. And no, I'm not saying you need to replace them with somebody who does the exact same thing they do, because that's what some people will say. But how now do you use that added flexibility in spots? What do you, how do you add, what do you add to the team, right? Can you say hi to Mariah? Hopefully they score more touchdowns during the playoffs. Go Bulls. What? I think Billy, uh, been coaching pretty good overall, except for some of his predictable closing schemes, maybe switching now and then it's not even just the closing scheme. It's the lack of adjustments, right? The fact that we don't move without the ball as a team, the defensive it, it, we get by. We get by. I may have more potential than Patrick Williams. Yeah, I said it. Don't kill me. I don't think that. I think a lot of people would agree with you on that one, brother. Do you see any teams blowing it up this offseason? Yeah, we actually talked about that over on Players' Choice. Um, there are definitely going to be some teams that blow it up this season. There are definitely going to be some teams that blow it up. Could Billy be better? Sure. Could the Bulls play harder? Sure. But ultimately, Hayes, you are correct. You got to have the talent first. Until then, you're getting uh, by with whatever, however you can. And that's really what it comes down to, right? The Bulls are getting by. And for for listen, for the way that the, the season started off, for the, as many players as we've had in and out with injuries, getting by, they're doing a damn good job at it. But the thing is, and this is what I've been trying to use my daily episodes to make sure I, I communicate to everyone, this is this is fun to watch during the season. To see a team get by, figure it out is great. But you don't want to go into a season and your plan is let's hope to get by. Let's hope to get by enough to where we're going to make it into the playoffs. We need change on this team as far as talent. We need that. We need more shooting. We need some rim protection, right? These are things that we need. And so could you develop some of the players on this team to give you some of that? Yeah. But you still need a you need a talent influx for sure. Still, Deanna in the building says I missed the game, but I see the Bulls were on BS tonight. Oh, absolutely, Deanna. This is why I feel leadership is important to the team. I know losing Lonzo hurt, but I just feel we need some better leadership on this team to take it to the next level. We need a better voice. Shannon Jr. looked really good today. I think he uh, would fit in well with this young core. I mean, yeah, we talked about that a little bit on the halftime hangout. I just don't see AK drafting them. Saw some people saying we may uh, we may try a Levine trade this offseason. I don't think that happens. We lack defense. Levine is a bad defender. Plus, Sacramento doesn't have the wiggle room financially. I don't know. I haven't really done all the look on it. I mean, now I know you guys do have contracts that can match up because back when that, that conversation started, I talked about that. But you, you never know. You just never know. As you did a video about possible draft prospects, we do a video about possible free agents, maybe around the playing tournament. Oh, around the playing tournament, we'll do it way before then. So the way that the off season goes for those that, that if you're if you're newer, if this is your first season following Chicago Bulls Central, as soon as the off season ends, so basically after they do their exit interviews, after they have their exit meetings and the and the exit press conference, I'll go through about a week of off season content, and then I'll immediately start up once we kind of know. The, the how the seating may work. I know we still have the lottery. I'll start looking at prospects, right? So you start getting your, hey, 
These are the centers that the Bulls could look at. These are the guards the Bulls could look at. These are the forwards the, the Bulls could look at. I'll do I'll do some videos like that. And then after the lottery happens, when we know exactly the pick and the range that the Chicago Bulls are going to pick at, I'll I'll do specific videos on prospects. So I'll do a video on Kyle F F Filiposki, right? I'll go over his positives. I'll go over his negatives. I'll go on how he can fit with the people of this team. So you'll get that high-level content. And then after the draft, that's when I switch gears towards free agents. So yeah, I, I, we got an off-season plan here. We do it the same way. It'll be our third off-season now covering this team. And uh, yeah, I, I, I feel, and people can either vouch for me and say I'm tripping. I feel like we have the most comprehensive Chicago Bulls focus um off-season content around uh i stay weekly during the off-season i mean say daily during the off-season so you, you'll have a lot of content still coming your way billy isn't terrible and isn't great he's man but all his flaws i really dislike when you have all these injuries you need the coach that can be the best he can be in terms of the game plan and adjustments i mean hey preach bro preach To be honest, the Bulls have uh, maybe better going uh, young and working to maintain that top 10 protected pick in 2015, 2025. I know it was a typo. Uh, they they would be the best. That would be the best way to have an organic reset without uh, the goal to tank. And I've said that before, right? I've said that on the video. Um, I think I actually think it was yesterday's daily episode. I said pretty much the same thing is that you don't want to like it's not tanking, right? If you prioritize your young guys, one or two things happen. Let's say the Bulls do move earn a lot into the point where he's getting 25 minutes off the bench every night let's say they they uh julian phillips he's getting 15 to 18 minutes off the bench every single night right and then you've prioritized those young players one or two things are going to happen and they both work out well for you one if you do play well enough to where you make the play in you've done that by developing your young players and knowing exactly what they're going to be for you for the future or if you fail and you've tried to develop those young guys, they've still played well, but you don't win games, you then get to tick, keep your top 10 protected pick. So, I mean, the Bulls have a lot of routes. They're going to go on it. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, we'll see what happens there. We'll see. Gino says, I hope so. If he's not going to get uh, with it for Chicago because there's no denying Levine's talent. Yeah, Levine has talent. I hate when people try to act like Levine's this wholly terrible person or player. He's not. He's a really damn good player. He just has some very big flaws, and you have to surround him with players to help mitigate those flaws. And so if you already have a team with solid defenders and you add and you need some scoring, he could be – and I've said this before. Levine going to a team where he can be a number two to true number one or even a number three to two one a to one a and one b, right? And he's a number two to those two players. You're going to see the best version of Levine, the best version of Levine. Best we could offer is Barnes, Kevin, Lyles, our uh, uh basically takes away half of our depth. Not worth a guy like Levine who makes our history bad perimeter defense even worse. Hey, I feel you on that. I feel you. I think Pat the designer would take offense with you saying you have the best Bulls offseason content. No, he wouldn't. Pat the designer doesn't really do Bulls offseason content like that. He doesn't. Let's just be clear here. <laughs> Pat doesn't do that. Look, go, go and check out the Windy City Breeze. Like, and that's not a slight. That's my brother, right? Let's be clear here. But um, he doesn't get in the weeds with draft prospects like he do. We covered last, last year, we covered 28 draft prospects. There's not that many people getting that type, that type in depth with it. Man, so. Do you feel what I meant uh, mean about better leadership to really help this team to reach the next level? Vooch complaining about defense. Billy chews bubble gum and really challenges Demars and Levine. No, still think it comes down to talent first. Talent. We need the talent. If we found a way to get a number one, would you keep Levine? If a true number one without giving up Kobe? Because to me, right now, unfortunately, right? If you if it came down to you had a true number one. You had to give up either Levine or Kobe to pair with that true number one. I'm kind of leaning Kobe White only because he's a better passer. He's a more active defender. They're scoring. They're, the, the gap between their scoring wise has, has decreased, right? I'm not saying that Kobe's the score that Levine is yet because he's not. But the, the gap between those guys have closed. And because Kobe's a better passer, has better basketball IQ, right? Makes better decisions down the stretch. Eh. 
Now, if you can keep both of them with a true number one, absolutely. Absolutely, MC. But hey, number one doesn't seem like they're walking through that door. So we'll see what happens there. CHGO Bulls. They make enough the amount of videos, but they don't go in depth like I do. Shout out to them. Those are my guys. Absolutely. But, yeah, man, let's just hope that the Bulls can, like, we'll see what they do Saturday. It'll be the most Bulls-like thing to do uh, for them to win against the Boston Celtics. That'll, that'll be exactly what the Bulls will do. Do you see anything happening with the with that Portland pick? Yeah, it's going to convey to two. Just keep in mind, the, the protections on the Portland pick is that it's lottery protected into 2028, meaning that we only get it if the Portland Trailblazers make the playoffs. Do you see that team? Does that look like a team that's going to be making the playoffs anytime soon? We ain't getting that pick, brother. It's going to convey to two second-round picks. We're not getting that pick. We not getting that pick. That Portland Trail Blazers pick is not coming this way. Uh, we don't know what the pick they have yet, brother, because uh, the, the lottery hasn't happened. The season hasn't even ended. We have no idea where it's going to happen. It's not like the NFL where it's kind of cl more clear cut. Like, we, you just don't know. With the lottery, you will not know anytime soon. So... Eh, unfortunately loss by the Bulls, though, man. It, it sucks that this keeps happening to our team. But at this point, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I am kind of just ready for the season to be over with. And that's not to say that I'm not excited to see Bulls basketball. It's not to say I don't want to see this team go through the plane and, and see that game and how they play. But this just seems like this feels like a transitional year. And it's not, though. That's the crazy thing. It feels like a transitional year, and it's anything but a transitional year, right? This this is supposed to be a foundational year. Like, it's just, I'm just ready for it to be over. I, I'm just, honestly, I'm just ready for it to get to the point where we see what's going to happen. Deanna asked, how does Kobe play? Now, he played okay. For him to have the first game back from being out three games, he played okay. He played 29 minutes. He came off the bench. He went 5 of 13 from the field, 13 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, but he had a positive plus minus when he was on the court for what that's worth. Chicago always in trouble. Uh, playoffs is near. Io is a star. I listen. Io is balling right now. Uh, what if Io sneaks in and wins the most improved player from Kobe White? What would be your reaction? It's not gonna happen. I don't know if I am Hayes because we'll probably see the same team again next year. Sydney, listen. Do not trigger my PTSD, sis. A uh, bad part about this offseason is that I'm not sure if there are any great players out there to sign and not sure if we would be willing to give up what is necessary for the big fish to sign and trade. I listen, yeah, I don't do I don't argue with you there. I think if anything, this so the draft pick is going to be important for the Bulls to see what they can get in the draft, right? Where they pick, while there's not a whole lot of superstar level uh ceiling talent in this draft, there's still some really good five- to eight-year starters in this draft that can definitely help you at positions of need, right? But then outside of that, when you go towards free agency, the Bulls, if they bring back DeMar, if they bring back P. Will, they'll be operating with, with not much cap space at all, basically enough to sign a veteran free agent with part of the mid-level, not even the full mid-level. So it's it's going to be interesting all season, really interesting all season. Do you think Acme will actually do anything in this offseason? Oh, they're going to do something. Right there, it's not going to bring it a hundred percent back, but the level of which severity in which they do, I think that depends on how 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 much are they really really focused on trading Zach Levine. Is it one of those situations where they're willing to move Zach for just somebody to absorb part of his salary? They don't have to take as much back. They get some role pieces, some depth pieces. Right? Is it is it that bad, or is it where they're still holding their value in that end? But if they do move off from Zach. I think they're going to really try to use that extra space uh, to really kind of add some depth pieces to this team. Do you think the Bulls can still get to the seventh seed? I mean, it's not outside the realm of possibility if we're talking about just just uh, uh, in reality. No, they're not. They have the chance, right? They're three and a half games back, I think, right now, four and a half games back after tonight's loss 
of uh of of the seven seed. But it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Miami's playing too well. Um, they've won five. Uh, they've won five and five in their last ten. The the seventy sixers. If Joel and B comes back, is really gonna push that up some. So I don't. I don't see it happening. I'm not liking our chances of making it out the plan. And like I said, that's not the worst thing that can happen for the Bulls because then the Bulls get a lottery pick if they don't make it out the plan. It's not the worst thing possible. Uh, Iowa isn't going to win most improved player of the year, but if he keeps playing like this uh, for the rest of the season, he should at least be in the conversation. Hey, I can feel you there. I can feel where you're coming from. Uh, Hayes, I know that he doesn't score a lot of points, but Craig definitely does make a big impact. His defense and his decent show. Oh, for sure. For sure. Tory Craig makes a – he's one of those players that understands how to make an impact without needing the ball in your hands all the time, right? This season was asked. Glad the young core showed up or else would have been uh, like Charlotte's work. Who, man. Thank God for Kobe White and Io DeSumo. No, we don't have a chance to get the seventh seed because – Maybe the AC, but uh, Miami Heat is not going to allow that. Maybe the eighth spot. The Miami Heat got their own problems, though. I wonder where the Bulls would be had they uh, unloaded things the following year after we made the playoffs at the deadline. It feels like that since our trade leverage around the league has gone to hell. Yeah, I mean, listen, keep in mind, last trade deadline, not this one that recently passed, but last year, um, we got offered multiple first-round picks and R.J. Barrett for, for Zach Levine. Not to say that that's a great, but those multiple first-round picks would have done great. R.J. Barrett, I think, would have fed in, even with how Kobe White's playing now. Maybe it's stunted the growth a little bit there, but, hey. I don't know if I'm too old on, uh, too sold on Ryan Poles just yet, but I'll admit right now, he's miles above our tourists. If something doesn't work, he's not going to wait to pull the trigger. Oh, no, listen, I'm sold on Ryan Poles. When you look at what he did in clearing the cap initially when he got here, clearing out those veterans, the dead cap, all that, turning four draft picks in that first year to 10, most of those players working out, having a young secondary of all first and second year players besides Jalen Johnson, getting Darnell Wright uh, to this team, trading for Montez Sweat, signing him to a contract extension, trading for Keenan Allen for a fourth, for a fourth round pick. Brian Poles is a great GM. Now we got to keep seeing if he's going to get us to the promised land, but he's a really great GM. The only bright spot about this season was that the young Bulls were able to develop into bright spots and the team doesn't truly need Zach. Hey, Zach Levine's been in the league 10 years. Eight out of those years, his team have technically even been better with him off the court than on. That's just what the numbers say. I still think Zach's a hell of a talent, but the numbers say that. Do you think AK is going to jump back on the continuity bandwagon now that Lonzo is progressing? No, because Lonzo Ball is not going to make an impact in his first year back after being out of basketball for almost three years. No, I don't think so. But all right, so I'm going to go ahead and really wrap it up. I got to go do Locked on Bulls. And your boy tired. I'm not even going to lie to you. I had the most stressful day at work I've ever had at my job in the five years that I've been there in my life. So, um, I love you guys, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you're following the channel at Bull Central Pod. Also, go and check out my general NBA channel, for real. I, I know, I, you know, guys know I don't do a good job of promoting. I really don't like even plugging stuff like that, to be 100% honest with you guys. But we're putting in some serious work. Been dropping daily since we had that channel back. Um, and if you like just general NBA content, I feel like it's a really good channel. I really do. Um, Steve-O, Bobby, C.W., they're going to start being on there a little bit more as well. Um, but go and check out NBA Central if you guys like that general NBA content. But otherwise, man, go Bulls. See Red. Love you guys. Peace, y'all.